so we arrived to Grindelwald and we are going to Grindelwald first and we are here to do the longest sledge run in the world that was actually the whole reason and purpose of the trip I really wanted to go sledging because we don't really ski and skiing to go skiing you really need to come for like a week you, you don't need to learn you don't need to do it properly but the sledging is fun and as I said Grindelwald has the longest sledge run in the world once you go up the cable car to Grindelwald first it would take you around three and a half hours is to complete the entire journey and yeah it's ideal it's obviously better to come with your own sledge but we didn't we don't have one so we have to rent one here and yeah it's actually quite cool today but yeah hopefully we won't freeze there is a sledge rental right in front of the cable car entrance convenient they told us to rent up there so they literally said, like, go up and rent in Intersport up there. So, let's see. I hope there is availability. Many, many sludges for car all around the cable car. I wanted to say big thanks to the Grindelwald Eiger Tourism Board who supported us with a day pass uh, for Grindelwald first so we could try out sledging today. So yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, but if you want to go sledging, you basically need to buy a day pass or a multi-day pass. It doesn't matter which activity you do. Uh, it's the same price for everyone, for skiers, for snowboarders and for sludgers. The only difference is that you are generally not allowed to share the same routes as it would be a little bit dangerous. So you'll see there are dedicated routes for sledging. So we hire the sledges. And this is a little map. So the only place we can go now is to board because everything the bazaar is closed. So it's gonna take us around two hours if we are fast. Yeah, we are ready to go. This route. Our sledge rental was around 18 or 19 Swiss francs per person and that was the price for the entire day. At the rental office uh, in Intersport, they are actually checking what you are wearing. Uh, it is very important that you wear appropriate clothes, <laughs> proper winter clothes, and it is not allowed to go sledging if you're wearing trainers. So you do need proper winter shoes. Uh, because it is important um, to be able to stop. You won't be able to stop in trainers and it might become dangerous. You don't need a helmet. Of course, it is advised, but uh, it is not mandatory. There are also multiple routes you can take and they're all marked purple. Still need to climb all that mountain. Still walking. Hope it's not too long now. It's a bit windy here. Finally, we reached a place where we could trial sledging. Uh, keep in mind, I haven't done it since I was probably like 11 or 12 years old. And I kind of thought that it was a, an activity for kids, but in Grindelwald, it is definitely not an activity for kids. Of course, you can go with your kids, but I've seen so many adults and group of friends going sledging. And yeah, it is really fun. As I mentioned before, there are multiple routes you can take. Uh, one of the routes we wanted to try, of course, was the longest route. So that route required a bit of walking. I think we walked for around 45 minutes. Some bits were challenging because we had to literally drag the quite a heavy sledge behind us. But we were actually happy to do some exercise. So beautiful. Ooh. So sledging is actually a bit harder than I thought because the complexity so I thought that in the beginning I thought it's kind of like for adults and the children alone but now I feel like this path is not very child friendly because the speed is really really fast so it's really really fun but when you go down you have to stop so much you have to like use your legs a lot so it becomes tiring if you add to that all the mini mountains you had to climb to get here it actually 
a really really challenging activity in terms of physical shape because don't forget that you are on uh, two and a half kilometers above the sea level so it is quite uh, high altitude so you get tired a little bit faster so yeah it's a good physical exercise but the views are just stunning just look at that so pretty and it's also very very empty there's just oc occasional skiers and walkers because you do share this um, this path with the uh, cross-country skiers but it's mostly for sledging I won't be doing voiceover for the entire journeys. I'll just speed it up to show you the landscapes and how beautiful it was because the honestly the views were absolutely stunning. We couldn't capture any of the sharp turns, but you just need to trust us because yeah, some some turns were quite quite sharp <laughs> and I even felt scared a couple of times. We went for a second run, so now we're doing the 53 and 55, so we got all the way from board to the first, and now we're going down again, and this, this one is much faster and doesn't require too much walking, so this one is also super super fun! We've done two sledging runs. We've done the long one, the, the one that is the longest one in the world. Although the last part was closed, so we couldn't do that one, the board to Grindelwald. But uh, nonetheless, it was great. It required a little bit of hiking. So not a little bit, actually quite a bit of hiking. That's why it takes about two hours to complete. The other one, uh, the one that starts from first all the way to board, I think it's 53 and then it turns into 56 or something like that. Um, th that one is really, really fast. You don't need to walk almost at all, just like a little climb and then it's all the way down. It's extremely fast. It's much more crowded because you don't need to walk for like <laughs> half an hour to get there. Um, a little bit more dangerous, I would say, because they're quite sharp turns and lots of people are just stopping on the way. So you end up almost like having accidents and <laughs> crashing into people but it's really really fun and um, you go really fast overall it was a such a great experience i think if you arrive there really early in the morning you can do 
plenty of runs, so you probably could do one long one, or like two long ones, and maybe three or four short ones. Um, but yeah, uh, that if you don't get too tired, because it is tiring actually, because you are have to stop with your legs all the time, so it's uh, quite a good, uh, it's really good leg exercise. And right now we came to a really nice restaurant, Alpin Hotel Port, next to the port station. Um, they have raclette, and uh, that's what we're gonna have. And we got two beers. Cheers! Plus. Unfortunately, raclette was not the best raclette we've ever tried, but I think it was pretty decent for a place located in the middle of the mountains. Um, as I said, it was next to the board station, so it was really easy for us to just go back. And it's very convenient because you don't need to go all the way up to first to return your sledge or all the way down to Grindelwald. You can just leave your sledge at the board station, just talk to someone, to someone working at the cable car and they, they will take your sledge for you. Every single sledge has some sort of identification number so they will cross check um, with your rental details and if you return your sledge uh, you won't have to pay any fines. But overall it was such a great experience and I hope we will be back one day to do a couple more sledging runs, hopefully when the whole sledging run is open and I recommend it to you too. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye!